That's right. This affects all of us, not only our fish and wildlife dying off, but dangerous chemicals may be infecting our drinking water. Gary Niles is a man passionate about what's happening to the river. He took us on a boat tour, giving us an up-close look at a rapidly changing ecosystem. North of Yuma is the original Colorado River Bypass. Gary Niles and his family have owned a home here since 1987. We first noticed them probably 10 or 12 years ago. At first the area was pristine, but over the years, things have changed. Gary blames it on a bypass that was built about 40 years ago. In this particular little area, this nine mile stretch, was prone to flooding, so they, they made what's called a Cibola Cut. And they started right there with dredges and dredged a new river. It was designed to improve water flow, but it didn't work as planned. The original bypass was eventually cut off. Now there's no flow to carry out the silt and sediment. It pushes all the silt in here and it'll dump hundreds of thousands of yards in one storm. That silt creates mud banks, a perfect environment for invasive weeds. At Marshall's camp where Gary lives, the weeds are literally taking over. These reeds will, can encroach as much as 20 to 30 feet per year, so if you start with a river that's 400 feet wide, it's not going to take very long to get down to a narrow channel. This video illustrates just how fast they grow. The brown reeds are from previous seasons. The green ones are from this year alone. You can also see pockets of plants growing in the middle of the river, where the sediment is just too high. Experts are especially concerned about one invasive weed, the Arundo Dunnax, which may be pumping dangerous chemicals into our drinking water. Basically, it's a chemical called DD, DMT, excuse me, and uh, DMT is a federally controlled substance. Uh, it gets into the water. It will kill uh, the, the fish, the frogs, uh, basically anything that's in the water. Gary says these plants are not only taking over the river, but forcing it to evaporate at an alarming rate. We have a water issue where it's evaporating so much water into the atmosphere that you lose, the benefit, we lose trillions of gallons a year uh, to the atmosphere that could go to the cities. About 10 miles north in Mitchell's camp, you can really see the result of years of neglect. This spot used to be 400 feet wide, but the sediment has accumulated so much it's created an island. Raymond Cook says the water is so shallow, most boats can't get through, and the fish are disappearing. Pretty soon, it might as well camp out in the middle of the desert. That's what it's going to be if, if, they keep, if they keep putting the water down the other way. Even further north is the Palo Verde area, which once thrived as a popular tourist spot. But now the Palo Verde Lagoon is stagnant and deemed unswimmable. Gary says the river here used to be 20 feet deep, now you can almost walk on the water. Reports show the bacteria levels there are 10 times the water quality criteria, and it's been designated a health threat. Gary and many others are astonished this area of the river is not being maintained. What's going to happen if this problem doesn't get under control? Well, we're going to continue to lose trillions of gallons of water a year. Uh, the wildlife will eventually be crowded out and people will lose the use of this water channel uh, for fishing, for navigation, and for recreation. Millions of us in the region depend on it, but Gary fears one day the river may literally run dry. Altogether, 18 miles of historic federal navigable waterways are affected. Tuesday night, we'll explore what the experts are trying to do about this and whether they can save the Colorado River if it's not too late. Back to you. Gary Niles calls the banks of the Colorado River his home, but he's concerned decades of neglect are starting to show. It's sad, but there's also a challenge to it. After a bypass was built almost 50 years ago to prevent floods, the flow to the original channel was cut off. We've had several million yards of sediment deposited here, so the entire original river channel has become silted in. The sediment and silt piled up, creating a perfect environment for invasive weeds. Areas that were once 400 feet wide are now just 20 feet across. You see the reeds there. Uh, five years ago, you'd see coyotes walking along, raccoons, deer, burrows. And beaches that were once enjoyed by wildlife are wiped out. Experts say the water is evaporating at an alarming rate and warn one invasive weed, the Arundo Donax, is seeping dangerous chemicals into our water. It produces DMT, which is a 
uh, hallucinogenic. In some spots along the channel, the water is stagnant, a breeding ground for dangerous bacteria. In the summer, the still water encourages growth of another weed, which is a risk to swimmers and wildlife. It's indicative of, of what happens when a biological system goes out of control. But Gary, who manages the Clearwater Project, says the problem can be fixed using special equipment. They pull out the weeds, then dredge the channel so they won't grow back. Initially, the cost is great, but eventually it will only require regular maintenance. The plan calls for $100 million over five years and would create 50 full-time jobs. The problem is, who will pay for it? It's a jurisdictional overlap. You've got Reclamation that owns the water, Fish and Wildlife Service owns the land, as well as Bureau of Land Management, the, where all the sediment comes from. Gary has gone straight to the head of those departments, the Secretary of the Interior, and filed suit. The cornerstone of our lawsuit is called the Public Trust Doctrine. That goes back to ancient Roman law that guarantees that you don't have governments or landowners or anybody blocking off waterways. He's confident in the end, he'll win the battle. I've spent my life uh, in the outdoors, and I've seen a lot of things. Uh, I have grandchildren who would like someday to enjoy uh, this area the way I have. Gary and his group are fighting to preserve the river so the beauty of it can be enjoyed for generations to come.